Hi there and welcome to The Tracker here on City TV. It's been a bit. Um, today it's a World Cup conversation. It's a Ghana conversation and it's with somebody who knows the national team really well. Former Borussia Dortmund, former Grasshoppers, former <laughs> Ashanti Gold, former Black Star striker. Our guest thing I have for is my guest in the studio these days. It's a little bit of a media person himself. He will not admit it, but that's the truth. Augustine, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, what have you been up to? I mean, before we even get into any talk of the nationality, what have you been up to? But when did I become a media person? Oh, I mean, I, 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 see, I see your exploits on other <laughs> platforms. Um, I mean, you're, 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 you're pioneering the way for a lot of your um, fellow colleagues. So I, I think it's a good thing. But Thank you. Yes, I, I, see you, I see you out there. You're, you're doing a pretty good job. So yes. I, 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 like, I like what you're doing. But what's Augustine I have been up to oh, generally? Oh, I've been involved in football behind mm -hmm. the scenes, not at the forefront. Uh, I'm happy because I've, I'm, I'm attached to the juvenile uh, side of <laughs> Ghana football, which mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we all want to promote. Yeah. Yeah. Recently, there was this KGL Under-17 competition, mm -hmm. of which I was made the acting chairman because our okay. chairman, McDan, and also okay. the vice, Mr. Fianu, who just lost the wife, were not available. Oh. So I had to step in and act on their behalf. And mm. it, it went well. Mm. And mm. I have my own private thing that I do beside. We'll get into that maybe <laughs> another time. But mm. let me just even stay with you on the juvenile football bit because there was a launch of, um, again, um, a talent hunt by mm. the FA to, yes, to sort of feed the base of the national teams, the junior national teams. I mean, what sort of criteria will go into selecting the players? What kind of players are you looking out for? And I'm asking this because... In Ghana, we are blessed with a lot of midfielders, especially defensive midfielders, and very few creative midfielders. So is there like a target plan for this talent hunt? I have not delved deep into what mm -hmm. the technical directorate of the FA wants to do. Yeah. But for me, I think it is good to get them around the ages of between 9 and 10, 11, thereabout. Mm -hmm. and, uh, because if the sole purpose yeah. is to improve... Is it the whole youth setup or mm -hmm. the youth setup of the national team? Yeah. So if it is the national team, yeah. then I believe that we have a structure in Pram Pram mm -hmm. where these boys can be educated okay. and then also trained. So we talk about academy, academy, yeah. academy. Yeah. You can use the sports to entice them to go to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after they are sporting activities, which is the training, yeah. they enter into the classroom and so yeah. on. And then we'll be able to sift and see, take the best ones, and then polish them to become the gem that we want them to become eventually, which is to feed into our national junior team. national teams, obviously, yeah. and then to the very under-20 Olympic team and the Blasters, ultimately. Hmm. I mean, the Blasters is the conversation today, but there's so much I want to you to just touch on quickly. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about our production line as far as coaching is concerned. Um, first of all, are you happy with the standard of coaches that we are producing as a nation and what could we possibly do to make that better i think we have we go through this uh teaching mm -hmm. to become coaches and then after that whatever you do is self-made yeah. okay. i think you need to educate yourself more hmm. most of the times when our coaches after a game yeah. they are being interviewed mm -hmm. i just ask myself that the way they even respond to the questions yep. When you've played a game and then they pose a question, say, oh, coach, Benjamin, how did you see the match? And then you come and say, first of all, let me thank Togbe Afede, let me thank my You are not getting it because you should learn from what you see on TV yeah, all the time. Best practice. Yes. What the club and the mm -hmm. Guardiola and mm -hmm. the rest are doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are talking to you about a particular thing, which is what you did in that match. Yeah. And so go straight ahead yeah. and then talk about it. Mm -hmm. But they will go and whine and whine. So there's a lot of development that the coaches have to go through. They should learn. They watch television. They, yeah. they should pick certain things from the coaches that they have the luxury of watching on television and yeah. how they go about things. And then mm. if they need be, if you want to travel out there to go and do yeah. an attachment, you go out there and then improve on yourself. That is all it is. Apart from that... Uh, nobody can because for me I always say the certificate is just a paper yeah but what you implement on the field mm -hmm. of play mm -hmm. makes you the coach that's true yes that's true let's let's now talk about the black stars proper right um Otuado, George Boateng, Masao, Didi Dramani and Chris Uting are in charge of the team now 
One of the things I want to start with is local football. Now, the conversation has arisen again that just two days ago, FIFA released the, what they call the help for the club's money, where they were going to pay clubs an amount of 10000 um, because if you had your player there, it was sort of, sort of compensation for you. It generated a discussion that people <laughs> said that, well, if that's the case, let's, <coughs> let's take a bulk of our local players in there so they can earn some money for the club for grassroots. I mean, that's not even a very serious problem. But my point is, where do you stand on local players in the national team? Do, do you think that as things stand now, there are individuals who are good enough to crack or to add or at least give them a headache on selection going to the World Cup? Yes, of course. There are some players uh, who probably can be part of the team to go and have the feeling of mm -hmm. what pertains to be there. Okay. Which is eventually when it gets to their turn, mm -hmm. they can also take their mantle and run with it. But uh, my, my question from where I sit is that how are we scouting those players? Okay. Has it been entrusted in the hands of Didi Dramani to do that scouting? Because obviously Otardo doesn't live here. Yeah. Boatin does not live here. Yeah. Houston is not here. So, is it that they've asked uh, Didi Ramani to mm -hmm. feed them with those information? I am not there, so probably yeah. yes. And he will be able to advise his yeah. colleagues as to which players mm -hmm. will be available. But as to the 10,000 and the argument here and there, are you trying to say that Karela FC should not get the 10,000 per day because some player is not, who is not good to be there? If well, you are looking at only mm -hmm. trying to get money for the clubs, clubs. then we will not be doing the right thing because yeah, then it, it won't be, be said even. Of course, me. just because mm. we are looking for the money, mm. we want to put players there. Players should be there on merit. Mm. We are going with 26 players. Yeah. 26 players, not all of them will play. Mm -hmm. But pick a player who will be part of the 26, yeah. who at any given time, when called upon, mm -hmm. can deliver. Okay. And the local players, I believe, and I entreat them. Yeah to also uh, be up and doing. Hmm. There is that, I've always said this, that not all players in Ghana mm -hmm. can play the national team. Okay. A player can be excellent in the league. He speaks for the national team, he goes there, and then he calls in his shells. Hmm. Because I was uh, a member of the under-17, way back 89, yeah. 1991, under-20, thereabouts. Yeah. There were some players who were excellent in our leagues. Hmm. One player is Robert Saba. Okay. He's playing for House of Folk. Yeah. Another player, Nino Edbohona. Yeah, Nino Edbohona. When they play for their clubs, it's a wow, good. But then when we come to camp, hmm. you, you can't really... They can't replicate the you, form. You see, so not every player has that, that yeah. courage and then whatever to be there. Yeah. So we, we need to look at them, psych them up, and know that if it's Banier or whoever that we yeah. are picking to be part of the team, Yeah. He knows what lies ahead of him. And so yeah. when he's there, given the opportunity, mm -hmm. he goes out there and, perform. and then performs. Let's look at the local national team, for instance, yeah. the Galaxy, for instance. Can you pick one or two players from there and add them to the national team? Maybe, yes. Hmm. Can they replicate the performance? At that level. At that level. It's another it's matter. matter. L let me just pin you to specifics because... In our last friendlies, Bania had a run out of about two minutes. A lot of people were upset with yeah. that. But he's been in and out of the team yeah. in recent times. There's been Ibrahim Danlad in and out of the team. Just speak to those two players for me. Do you think that as things stand now, in the current scope of things, Bania can have a shout at going to the World Cup? I really don't know. As we speak, the local league is on hold. Hmm. Because of... Uh, uh, an injunction or something, or a yeah. contempt or whatever. Yeah. We don't know when the league is going to resume. And so if we, if we are so, supposed to pick the national team players, mm -hmm. are we going to pick them based on form hmm. currently? Or we will pick them just because Ghanaians are saying we should pick them. And this is the World Cup. Yeah. You, <laughs> but, but you don't believe in the quota system that at least, you know, it, it's very... I know, I know we like to pick on merit, but it's very disheartening when you, let's say, for instance, see a 26-man Black Star squad and it's all foreign nationals. I would want that at least three. Yeah. And I've said it previously in my statement. Mm. At least three or four should be part. And I made a statement that not everybody yeah. who goes to a tournament will have the opportunity to, to play. play. And we can go back to 2006. Yeah. How many of our players that went there play? Alex Tichimins, I never played one second. Yeah. But he was part of the squad. 
I don't want to mention names. Yeah. 2010, mm -hmm. Raheem Ayu was part mm -hmm. of the team. Mm -hmm. He never played. So is other players. 2014, same. Yeah. And so, yes, <clears throat> I, I hold the view yeah. that some local players should be there. Mm. But pick the right ones. You spoke about this international friendly matches that we played. Yeah. I was expecting to see some new players start or maybe play like 30 minutes for us to mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. they are capable of doing yeah. if eventually called upon to come and represent us. Yeah. But I didn't see that. And so one player, for instance, he's not even a local player, Joseph Edu. Yeah. I see him play week in, week out for uh, Celta Vigo. Yeah. And he's not doing badly. Yeah. And he comes into our national team, he doesn't even play one minute. The question is, should we go to the World Cup? And then first game, lose two centre-backs. Hmm. And he's part. Yeah. Will he play? Yes. So if we don't give them the opportunity in these matches mm -hmm. to see, mm -hmm. then I don't think we are doing any, ourselves any good. Seriously. Hmm. Let's now delve into the national team proper, since we are, we are at that uh, level already. Um, we played two games. First, Brazil. Second, Nicaragua. And after the games, the, the psyche of Black Stars fans in Ghana has changed. I mean, after Nigeria, it was very optimistic. It was, we're happy to have Otoado. After the friendly games, a lot of people are looking at him like, is this guy the right man to take us to the promised land? How do you feel about, first of all, the coaching staff that we have? Not just Otto himself, but the entire technical setup that they have going into this World Cup? I think the technical setup is not bad because you have Chris Hutton there who yeah. has seen it all. He's coached Premiership, I think three yeah, Premiership teams. Course, yeah. He's never been relegated in the Premiership. Maybe he's sacked or he's yeah. left the club. And so it's good to be there to guide mm -hmm. more or less Otuado mm -hmm. who is mm -hmm. now learning the trade of becoming yeah. a coach on his own. Uh, Boatin, same. Didi Dramani, we all know him. So yeah. I think... The, the, the people around there, mm -hmm. it's not bad. Yeah. Uh, we, can, we can tweak them a bit based on what we, we expect from them okay. and then also want them to, mm -hmm. to give us. Mm -hmm. Like you stated, uh, the Nigeria game, we're all happy, we yeah. won. Even the president of the Republic said that they wanted to kidnap him or something, so let's put that <laughs> aside. But uh, that is gone. Yeah. Ghanaians are focusing on what's ahead on, on what lies ahead of us and from what they saw they think that mm -hmm. uh, he should up his game mm. and i believe he will do mm. I, I strongly believe mm. that because uh he's an up and coming coach yeah. who wants to learn and this is the time for you to receive the criticisms whatever form mm -hmm. and then uh, sleep on your pillow think about it and see what you can do because mm. at the end of the day what i say yeah it's not binding on you yeah you see, I have spoken mm -hmm. because I feel that we have to do A, B, C, D. But you are in charge. Yep. Reflect of what I have said. Mm -hmm. Can we do something about it yeah. or not? Mm. If you think there's something that you can change, yes. I remember when myself and CK was scouting for Avram Grant. Yeah. You know, when we lost our first match in Equatorial Guinea 2015, mm -hmm. I straight away said that, look, the format we want to play will not suit us. Mm. Yes. And Mr. Yantechi, being the FA president, through the chairman of the Blast Amanyoka, George Efri, yeah. listened and told the coach, Avram Grant, that Ghanaians are not happy about the format. Yeah. And he changed the format. And we went ahead mm -hmm. and won the margins yeah. away in the final, yeah. eventually, Lost the Ivorians, finances, yeah. our, our nemesis. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So, what I say, it's up to somebody. I'm not forcing you. But yeah. Just look at it and see if you can, you can do put something about some it. Yes. So I, I think, yes, they can do the job, but they should also uh, make us understand what they are doing. They are doing, yeah. Mm. That's it. Mm. That's, that's very well said. Let's talk about expectations for that group. So we've done um, a quarterfinal appearance, and that will obviously be the standard for us. I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to. What you what you did when you were at the, at the minimum level. So when you make a quarterfinal standard, you, you you aim probably to be at the quarterfinals quarter or the semis final. again. Looking at our group, when, when the draw was done, mm. you saw Portugal, you saw Uruguay and South Korea. How did you how how did you feel then 
about our chances and how do you feel now about our chances? I've never felt anything, Benjamin. Trust me. <laughs> because, you know, in my thinking, maybe because I played a game before. Okay. I believe strongly that in tournament, mm -hmm. you just have to have a plan. Okay. Because it's game by game. Okay. As you play, you scout on the other opponent. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you play Portugal today, you've scouted on Uruguay. Yeah. Or you scattered on Korea. Yeah. Because they are also playing. Yeah. And so you know what Koreans have done. Mm -hmm. You plan towards it. Mm -hmm. And then the last game, yeah. eventually. And so it is game by game. 2006, we lost to Italy in the first game. Yeah. Most of us were disappointed. But then Czech Republic, which was the number one ranked team in the world at the time, mm -hmm. you beat them. Mm -hmm. Then we beat the USA. Yep. And then we lost to Brazil. Uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then 2010, the first game... We, we won against, mm -hmm. I think, Serbia. Serbia. And then Australia. Yeah. And then... Uh, yes, like, that's like, just escape me. Yes. And then we beat USA in the second, the second round. round yep. And then moved on to the next round. Quarterfinal, eventually mm -hmm. we lost some penalties to Uruguay. And so, it's a, it, it's, it's a match by match tournament. Mm -hmm. You should have a plan. It's as simple as that. Hmm. How am I going to go into this tournament? How am I going to go into this match? Yeah. Against Portugal, is the first game. Am I going to open up? Am I going to go, go there hoping to see what they will do? Or I'm going to go there to attack them? Hmm. This is up to the technical men yeah. in charge of the team. Hmm. So they should plan. And so I've always said, scout, 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 scouting. The most important scouting for me, mm -hmm. I'm not saying everybody, yeah. because maybe somebody will understand this. Yeah. For me, yeah. is scouting during the match. Hmm. When you are playing a game during the match, scouting is the most important because you can scout a team mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. I go to scout on you, I come to your training, you don't know I'm a scout. Yeah, I put certain things down. Maybe you are engaged in a friendly game, mm -hmm. I come there, I put it down, mm -hmm. and an official game, I write, I know, oh, Benjamin's team is playing 4 4 2. Yeah, so I give the report to my taking camera. This is what yeah. they do, this is how they do they, they, they attack from the left more than they attack from the right. You plan. Mm -hmm. And then you start the game, and on that particular day, the coach decides he's going to play 3-5-2 mm. and not start from the right. Yeah. So you have a scout who is sitting there watching. When you are in the stands, you see the game better than no, stand down the there. Mm. So you have somebody up there who will always inform you mm. or in the second half informs you, look, this is what they have been doing, so yeah. let's do A, B, C, D. Mm. So mm. scouting during the match <clears throat> is yeah. the most important scouting that you can have to me. Yeah. So we should up our game mm -hmm. on that level. That make sure that if Portugal are going to play Ronaldo as the pivotal striker mm -hmm. and the things that he's capable of doing, what do we plan against mm. what he's capable of doing? Mm. Mm. And when we are able to get answers to these things, yeah. I think we'll be good to go. Let's let's get into the controversial topics and let's talk about team selection because that's where all the controversy is. Because when you get to our goalkeeping department, that's where it begins. Um, Wallacott has come in; he's done decently well. He's been our goalkeeper for the run. Before he's been injured and has now come back from injury, the debate has now arisen again that who is Ghana's number one number goalkeeper one. going to the World Cup? I think for one is Wallacott. For for now. Okay. For now, yes. Yeah. Because I think, uh, apart from the last friendly match we played against mm -hmm. Nicaragua when Ofori yeah. played, all the matches that we played. He's the one who's been he's in He's the one who's yeah. been in goal. And the one in Belgium is also not bad. Yeah, Manaf. Yes, Manaf is not yeah. bad at all. But uh, once again, it's, it's up to the, the... Because those are the goalkeepers we have. Yeah. Dan Ladi is doing well. Yeah. But locally, can mm -hmm. he translate that into the next level? The top World Cup, not African that's, Cup. That's as big as football pressure yes, gets. Yes, yes, yeah. the ultimate. Mm -hmm. Can he? It's another question for us mm. to answer. Mm. But for now, these are the goalkeepers we have. We don't have the Ole Lays or the yeah. Samir Jays now. Yeah. yeah. We have these ones. Let's have the belief in them. That with the proper mindset and setup, yeah, they are capable of delivering. Let's talk about Thomas Party as well, because he has been. I mean, I say that he's our best player on paper. When you walk into a game, even on the pitch, all things equal, he's our best player. 
his situation has become a little uncertain because of injuries. How do we plan as a team when our best player situation is like this, very unstable? We don't know when we are going to get him. We don't know if he's going to be available. <coughs> How do we plot around that? <laughs> Benjamin, when it comes to national team setup, mm -hmm. we always want to situate, situate the, the club that he plays for in the national team. It's different. But the players that he plays with, be it in Arsenal or Atletico mm -hmm. Madrid, mm -hmm. are different players compared to what we the team is. Yes. Mm. So the performance will not be the same. Okay. That's how come every time when he comes to play, yeah. one someone is inclined or saying, oh, he did not do so well, he's not putting himself in the game like yeah. he does with his uh, clubs that he plays. Mm. So I pray that between now, and the, the World Cup, Cup yeah. he doesn't get himself injured. Mm. Is he going to play the same role he's playing now with Asna in our national team, or he's going to be pushed a little bit up front? Mm. It will be up to the coaches. Because where he's playing now, he has a free role with the Asna team yeah. to distribute the balls, make the tacklings, make the breakups, yeah. and then push ahead. Don't forget, he's a very good shooter of the ball. He is. He very good goal scorer as yes, well. Yes, he has the ball very well for corner kicks and for, for all those. So, are we going to deploy him in the same role that he's been deployed in Arsenal? Or we are going to change that? That can also bring a little bit of confusion. Because against Nigeria in Kumasi, in mm -hmm. the first half, I mm -hmm. felt it was a little bit too deep mm. for my liking. It was a little bit too That's deep. That's the first leg. Yes, first leg in Kumasi. Yeah. Because when he makes that stride up front yeah. or push a, he's different especially with his last pass when we are bringing him back like in Asna yeah then we need somebody who will have to give that pass eventually hmm. so who is that going to be who that person going to be so it's 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 a dicey situation for our coaches and i hope that they will be able to have the antidote to to that hmm. solution because we should have, look, are you going to play with the two pivots different DMs yeah. ahead of the back four? Yeah. Or we are going to play three back and play two DMs in there and have wing backs to support the attack. Hmm. It's all, all up to the coach. Because coach. against Brazil, this friendly man, the yeah. second half formation was totally different from what we saw in the first half. Mm -hmm. But we were able to operate well with the second half of formation than what we did in the first half. So I strongly believe that that mm -hmm. might help us. Mm -hmm. That is Salisu on the left, Amati on mm -hmm. the right, and Jiku in the middle. Okay. That's what we did against yeah. in the second half. Yeah. And we're able to hold on. We considered three goals in the first half. Second mm -hmm. half, we did not concede. And for me, it was positive. Meaning that maybe they saw something and yeah. then they had to change. But Nicaragua, we went back to the same back, back four. So I was asking... And I granted Anita, I said, I want to know my brother Otardo, what, what system, system he, he's playing. And, and, and this sentiment that you're sharing, mm. I, I spoke to Asamoah just two weeks ago, and he was sharing the same sentiment that yes. Ghana needs to master one system going to the World Cup. What we want to do, period. Mm. We should have our system. Yeah. And sometimes even try to detect to the opponent. Mm. Because now I've stopped playing. Yeah. When I was playing, I was playing up front. Yeah. Now I play mostly at the back. <laughs> and I now know. At your Monday stars. Yes. Game. Where is he at the back? You mean center back? Or? Yes. That's why I play. Interesting. And you can't run <laughs> past me. Because the game is always ahead of me. Interesting. I see the game yeah. ahead of me. I'm able to know mm -hmm. if an opponent is going to give a pass. I'm looking at his eyeball. Okay. And I'm able to determine that look, he's trying to give the ball to bed. So quickly by the time he gives the ball, I've intercepted the ball and I'm mm. going. Mm. At this age. Because you, you have your striker yes. instincts, yeah. I have that thing because I'm not going to allow the striker to, to take the pace of the game for me. Mm. When you do that, you have strikers like Messi and uh, Ronaldo, yeah. they will kill you. So mm. you always have to think a step ahead of mm. them. Mm. So it's, it's, it's about our coaches, Tenka men, what they see and yeah. the plan they, 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 they have, they have, they have for, for the players going forward. Mm. Let's take a break here on the tracker. Um, we are getting into things gradually. We are talking about the plain body and what we should be doing right. We'll just get to a few of the, what I would say, touchy points, and then we'll move it on to 
off the pitch stuff because off the pitch stuff have been a big impediment to Ghana's progress in the World Cup, especially in the last edition. So there's a lot to chew on here on the tracker. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are speaking to former Black Star striker Augustin Ahenfo. Augustin, let's let's talk about a few more things that I have found curious. Now, I, I want to talk about a guy like Kamal Din Suleimana. I, I watch him and it's very strange for me because he does really well when he plays for Ren. Electric on the left-hand side, can cut in, can score, can dribble, can get past this man. He, I, I don't think he's played a good game for, for Ghana yet. I don't, I don't think I've watched one good Kamal Din game for the Black Stars yet. I mean, you've watched him yourself as well. What do you think is holding him back? <laughs> very, very difficult. I think I've said to myself a couple of times mm -hmm. that I've watched him play in France. Yeah. For instance, last year before he got injured, mm -hmm. it was electrifying. Yeah. I mean, I remember watching them against Paris Saint-Germain and what he did to them. But like you stated, yes, when it comes to the national team, I don't know what holds him back. Yeah. Seriously. Maybe he needs to be psyched up. Maybe he needs some former players around to yeah. advise him on, 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 on that role, for, yeah. for instance. Because he's a good player. So why, how can you do that for your club side and when it comes to the national team, you're not able to... You're not being asked to do anything extraordinary yeah. than what you do with your club. So why is it that you can't really do it when you come to Ghana? Hmm. Uh, it's a very big question for me to answer, but I think the coaches mm -hmm. should identify... <coughs> because against Brazil, he started. Yeah. And you could not even see him in a game. Mm -hmm. He started on the right. Yep. I don't know what is holding him back, seriously. I can't really, because I've not been that closer to the team. Yeah. So I can't really pinpoint exactly what, exactly what the situation is. Hmm. Even when he had had games that were not that tough. Yep. If not really, he can't really, impose himself yes, on the game. Yes, not really seen him. Yeah. But uh, he's a good kid and, and uh, he, should, he should take certain things also out of the mind. Because I think sometimes we, we become a little bit... You grow a little bit of fingers, your shoulders are up yeah. because everybody is talking about, about you and yeah. you come into a national mm -hmm. team. But this is a different ball game. The national team, the moment you are up there, your hands are here on your mm -hmm. chest. Mm -hmm. It's a different ball game. So I think he himself or people around him should mm -hmm. advise him. Yeah. If I, had that, I have that opportunity, yeah. I, I'll talk to him about uh, Mohamed Kudus, excellent player. Yeah. But if I have the opportunity to meet him, I'll tell him that sometimes he should learn to release the ball. Doesn't that come with maturity? I mean, I was even going to talk about Kudus, but you've touched on it yes. already. For, for him, that has been one of the biggest complaints about his game. Yeah. But does that not come with aging as a player, decision-making improving over time? It's, it's how we Ghanaians want football to be played. One-touch football, pass and We don't like that. If players play one-touch, we think they are not good. Mm. We want to see players who will take 90 degrees, 360 degrees with the ball. Hey, Akas was in it. Hey, he's the best player. <laughs> but the white man does not see that. Look, yeah. I don't want to speculate, but I strongly believe mm -hmm. the Ajax coach is not playing Mohamed Kudus there because, because of, of this. So mm -hmm. now he's pushed him up front. He's a very good shooter of the ball. Mm -hmm. He shoots the ball very well. Mm -hmm. He's quick. So you will be up there. Then when you touch the ball one to then you lose the ball, you still have midfielders to cover you. Mm. But in the middle, when you lose the ball, yeah. it's a counter. So he's been pushed up there. So Is that what I, we should be doing with I, him? Why not? They have people in there. They have taken come in the team. Don't they see? I mean, Benjamin, but, we don't but those have... are two different teams though. I mean no, I, but when I, can... I, I actually might have players that we don't have who have attributes that our players might not have. Because over there, mm -hmm. they don't hang on to the ball. They are playing a system yeah. that allows you to push the ball. When you get the ball, you push your, okay. your, 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 your partner. So the ball should flow. But the ball is always quicker than you. Hmm. So the ball should be moving, doing the work. Yeah. Like Uncle Ben Kofi will tell you. Mm -hmm. That whenever he hears people talk about the best way to defend is to attack, he, he laughs. The best way to defend... Mm -hmm. It's to be in possession of the ball. Hmm. For as long as, long as, long as, as you are in possession of the ball, yeah. you are defending. Yeah. Why? Because the opposing team is trying to catch the ball yeah. from you, yeah. recover. So they'll be running like, look at Barcelona. It's the best defensive team. Mm -hmm. Because they have That's the possession Because they always the have the ball. 
Mm. <laughs> you see? Mm. So, uh, so you I, prefer Kudus, the false nine? In, the, in our national I don't know if he will play there. But should he play in the middle? Yeah. Then he should be spoken to. Like at the final third of the field, yeah. he can go all out. Decide to dribble and shoot. Yes, yeah. that one you are allowed. But when you are there, in the middle of, in the, the, middle of the park, try to release the ball as mm. quickly as possible. as possible. Release, take position, yeah. and receive, and move on. That's it. Mm. Now, what, one guy who has also come into the team that a lot of people seem excited about is Mohamed Salisu. Obviously, based on the quality that we've seen him display in the English Premier League, he goes up against quality opponents literally week in, week out. So that's a good addition to our team. How do you feel about Salisu's inclusion? I really didn't know what was holding him back hmm. from uh, ans earlier. answering to our call. But then he came against Brazil. He came on as a sub. Mm -hmm. And we saw the quality he, he mentioned. So yeah. He was very calm. Even where I felt he, he held on to the ball and the opponent nearly took the ball for him, he still was able to recover mm -hmm. and dribble the opponent mm -hmm. and pass mm -hmm. the ball. He's a quality dude. We have to uh, encourage him. Yeah. In as much as it's taking him this long, mm -hmm. I know some people are not happy that he's been invited. But you see, the World Cup always has surprises. Yeah. Players who have never been involved in our qualifiers 2006, 2010, yet participated during or were part yeah. of the team. And so, yes, he did not play the qualifiers, but we are going to the world stage. And so, yeah. it's okay. There are lots of Alex Tichimensen, Razak Pimpon, mm -hmm. all these who never played qualifiers. But... They went to the 2006 World Cup. Yeah. So it's not the first time. Hmm. Let's, let's, let's give them the encouragement that they need. Let's support them. That's one thing we don't do, Benjamin. Hmm. We always, you see, a Ghanaian, it's always that type of a person who wants you to uh, make a mistake and for them to... Uh, Reprimand you. Yes, yeah. take advantage. But I don't want to talk about it. I've been at some TV stations where... Yeah. Even the cameramen, yeah. they've betted against Ghana to lose. You mean we don't support the national team? We don't. Team. But when the team loses, the same people will be the ones insulting. <laughs> I, 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 tell me you've not heard that. No, I've heard about it. Yes, I mean, even sports journalists. But, but isn't this... I, I, I feel like the bad will the Black Stars have endured is not out of the blue. It started from the World Cup, where there was the impression created that they didn't want to play and they were money grabbers, if I could put it in, in, in that manner. Because that's where it started. And then we've had to do bring back the love and all types of things to be able to whip up interest for the team again. So, again, I, I can understand the, the, the negative sentiments because mm. sometimes Ghanaians feel like there's a lot of politics around our team, generally. And I, I don't blame them, but the truth is... I think most people want to see Ghana succeed at the World Cup. At least the, a good chunk of the people that I know. It's because we are divided. Hmm. Yes, we are divided. And we sometimes try to bring politics in everything that we do. Yeah. And that's where the problem is. The moment we don't come together as a nation, yeah. when it comes to sports, hmm. there will be problems. Okay. Because you are going into a competition. Yeah. One part says, oh, because of this government, that team is not going to do anywhere. The other thing because we are going to win the cup and come to show to you that we have been able to. We don't have a united front. Hmm. Then when we go and it does not happen, the players suffer. Ministers travel, yeah. get their per diems, allowances. Players go to play. Some break their legs. Yeah. And when they are giving $5,000, it's an issue. The chief executive for Coco Board, is his salary more than the president of the Republic of Ghana? It is. More, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Maybe three times or so. Yeah, we don't complain about it as a people, but yet, mm -hmm. periodically, yeah, it's not every like a monthly salary or something. No, within a year, Blaster can play maybe four times, unless there's a competition. Mm -hmm. Within a year, yeah. So, if you calculate, even if it's five thousand per match, you're talking about twenty thousand. Yeah, that twenty thousand is not guaranteed. Hmm. Ask me why I'm saying it's not guaranteed. Why? Because when we lose, we will not get that money. True. It's a winning bonus. <laughs> it's a winning bonus. bonus. Yeah. So even when we draw, we don't get it. Hmm. They might get their per diem in camp here and there. Yeah. But the money does not come. 
But here, it is perceived yeah. that every time when they come, it's 5,000, 10,000. So those, the boys... Those things don't bode well for the, for no, the, for the goodwill look, of the team. Recently, yeah. Faroe Islands beat Turkey. Hmm. That would not have happened in a long time, a couple of years ago. You think recently when we lost to... Uh, what was Comoros. It, Comoros. Look yeah. at the things that were being said about the place. Turkey lost to Faroe Islands. A country of like 600,000 or so, or less than 600,000. Yeah. They beat Turkey. But the next national Turkish man, the stadium mm -hmm. will be full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going mm -hmm. to support their people. Mm -hmm. But trust mm -hmm. me, yeah. if Ghana loses to which of the countries, Djibouti, yeah. or maybe Eritrea, yeah. the next match, I'm sure when even the blaster is entering the Crasp Stadium, it's going to be hell. <laughs> let's, let's stay on the squad. Now, one of the controversies that have arisen around the Black Stars during tournaments is that there's a seeming lack of discipline or lack of discipline in camp. Again, there's always the conversation of should players be allowed to take their better halves to competitions. Going to Qatar is even more complex because of their religion and yeah. stuff like that in there. You haven't been a player before, you knowing what being in camp is like. What do you think? Our players, sh should that be something that our players should be allowed to do? Should you be able to have a better half in camp? Because I, I know that FIFA, for instance, have made room for, um, I think, visitors or partners of individuals or in the teams to be able to bring. Is that something you think is essential to perform well? You see, I think we have to put it in the right context. They are not in camp. The women, okay. even if they are going to be there, will not be in the same camp as the players. Okay. They are going to be somewhere. Azumi Benjamin, you are going to a tournament in Cote d'Ivoire. Why are you using that? Uh, let me use <laughs> And you decide to bring your better half. Come and watch me. <laughs> yeah. She's not coming to stay with you in the same hotel. Yeah. And, excuse me to say, you will not have the luxury of going to sleep with her. Mm -hmm. Because you mm -hmm. are in your camp. They yeah. are somewhere. Okay. But it's just... What car comes around every four years? Yeah. And if we are lucky to be there, <coughs> and my spouse... It's been given the opportunity. Like England is flying all the this and their wives there. Yeah. They call them wax the or whatever. Yeah. They're going there to Qatar. The expenses bought by the federation. Yeah. Here we are. Our federation does not think on that line. Mm. And I don't think they are even going to bring the spouses of the players along. Yeah. I don't yeah. that one. So we shouldn't <clears throat> really even try to make any argument about that. I don't think the players mm. themselves mm. want their wife. They've got they know. What How Ghanaians are. Look, 2014. Yeah. A journalist. Mm -hmm. Because I was in Brazil. Yeah. We were based in Natal. Okay. Where we played against America okay. in the first game. Okay. The team was based in Marseille. Marseille or whatever. Yeah. Down somewhere. Yeah. Far away. Yet, when whatever happened, happened. A journalist yeah. was on radio saying that Becker was... Some one player was sleeping with Becca, or Becca was going to their. Yeah. I, I, I heard that issue, it became a very nasty or controversial I mean, matter. So I said to myself, How? Because we're on the same floor. I was on the 11th floor, yeah. Becca was on the 15th or so floor up there. Mm -hmm. We had breakfast every morning together. Hmm. So, how was she going to go to where the blasters was hours away from where? You, can, you have to fly before you get there. Yeah. And then still come and have breakfast with us the next morning. <laughs> but this was what somebody was, yeah, was putting out there. out there. Yeah. So Very damaging. We, we, we have to be very, very careful. Uh, seriously. Mm. It is soccer we are <coughs> going to play. Yeah. It does not mean yeah. that when we play professional soccer in, our, in, in the various countries that we've played in, yeah. my wife is with me. Yeah. We go to train within the week. Mm -hmm. We have to go to camp. Some of the matches don't even go to camp. Hmm. When I was in Switzerland, <coughs> on a Saturday when we yeah. have a match, Saturday morning we come from home, yeah. meet at the club, do some shake-up, drive to the hotel, eat and come and play and go back home. We only hmm. went to camp when we were traveling. Hmm. So I slept with my wife the yeah. previous night. Yeah. You don't know what transpired between us. I came there and then I come and play and then I go. Yeah. And as professional players... Everybody knows mm -hmm. that sex takes a lot of energy out of you. Hmm. So I have a day to play and I want to have sex <clears throat> before I come and play. You can play maybe 45 minutes, but thereafter, you see that you'll be tired. <laughs> That'll be a lot of trouble. So 
sometimes when you hear yeah. people make those arguments, yeah. uh, it's, it's sad, but that's, that's, that's their mind, and we have to leave them. Let's take another break here on the tracker. When we come back, I'll be asking or guesting a couple of random football stuff. Some World Cup related, some non World Cup related. And so um, it will be quite interesting in the next couple of minutes. Let's uh, take our final break here on the tracker. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are speaking to former Black Star striker, guesting Info. Augustin, aside Ghana, I mean, you'd want us to do well. When you look at the teams that are currently at the World Cup, which other team do you fancy to win the competition? I think Argentina is playing well. Mm. Brazil, from what I saw in the last two matches they played, they are in shape. Yeah. But um, I mean, you can't count France out. Okay. Yes. Even England. Germany is still around. Spain is around. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Ghana is there. Yeah. I will be biased to put Ghana in there. So it's Portugal and the likes. Yeah. So this World Cup, for me, is going to be very interesting because previously, We've always held the World Cup after the league season. This time around, it it's in the middle, middle of, of the, the league season. League so yeah. players are Fresher. extremely fit, yeah. fresh. I hope that they will carry through what we are seeing now currently on the Premiership, La Liga, yeah. whatever, into the World Cup. And so I, I will not pinpoint the say that this team is going to win. Yeah. Because for World Cups, 2006, everybody thought Czech Republic was going to be one of the teams to... Mm -hmm. To surprise all of us, yeah. they went out in the first round. Yeah. Twenty uh, for uh, is it? Twenty fourteen. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. Germans after winning the last World Cup went out in the first round. Yep. Spain. Yep. Same. After winning the two thousand and ten, yeah. went out in the first round. Yeah. And so France, mm. let's see. And it's, it has happened to them before two thousand and two. Yeah. yeah. After they had won nineteen ninety eight, mm -hmm. two thousand and two, they went mm -hmm. out in the mm -hmm. first round. So, well, the World Cup is there to surprise you. Mm. <laughs> so, which of the African teams do you like the most? Mm. I mean, aside ourselves, obviously, which of the other African teams do you like the most going into the competition? I never thought of Cameroon qualifying. <laughs> I didn't see it coming either. Yes, because of Algeria coming into their own country and beating them and playing so well. Mm -hmm. And then Algeria going ahead and taking the lead in Algiers. Yeah. And they came back to win. They have that that thing. But I think Morocco, mm. for me, you have an eye on yes, Morocco. yes, they, they've been consistent for some time. Yeah. Yes, because of one of the players, the coach is gone. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Ziyech. Yeah, he's because back in the team now. He had, he had, he, the coach had issues with it. But you see, yeah. whenever I see a coach having player an issue with a player, mm -hmm. it baffles me, because mm. look, sometimes you just have to manage them. Yeah. Because top players sometimes are a little bit difficult to handle. What are you looking for from the player? Mm -hmm. Is to give you performance and yeah. results. Yeah. How do I get through to him mm. or make him give me? Yeah. And then forget about that other part of him. Sometimes yeah. we should yeah, there, be there has to be that. Yes. We should be able to, to manage individual. To manage because yeah. you should be you should be in charge. But being in charge yeah. does not make you or you should be an authoritative person. person yeah. No. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if the performance is positive, it's you, the coach, who is going to take the credit. True. That, oh, rival to us to the World Cup 2010 yeah. and we did well. He came back to Ghana because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when he came... He still managed to work with players he had worked with before. You understand. Let, let me finish off with this conversation. So, Kojua Samoa retired uh, recently. He had a great football career mm -hmm. as an individual. Um, I noticed something, right? Not a lot of our Ghanaian players are open and willing like him to retire and officially announce their retirement. Damn. First of all, why do you think that is the case and what can we do about that situation? I think as you speak, even Steven Apia has not announced his official retirement. Has he? I don't remember. Myself, I just remember we played a testimonial I, I, for him. Yes, I, testimonial was... Played way back, way back ago, yeah. but we expect that officially to announce. Yeah. Myself, I never announced, you but never, I stopped. Yeah. 2008, I stopped because, and maybe uh, nobody told me mm -hmm. to make an announcement. But for mm -hmm. him, I think he still have had that that he wanted to still continue playing. Yeah, I know for sure that he was in Denmark. Yeah, training with uh, 
Is it Nordjylland? Yeah. And uh, it didn't really go well because they realized that yeah. the physically he might not have been up So to. he decided, okay, fine, then let me stop. And he needed to do that. But there's another phase of life that he needs to start, uh -huh. which is now he announced that he's going to work with his agents yeah. to, do, to go into player management, which is very good. Uh -huh. And it's not just going there. You have to learn. You have to study. Do some small, small yeah. courses here and there <coughs> to be able to aid you to mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. do that. So I think it is just... Kojo has always been that person. Very calm. Doesn't speak that much. Yeah. And it's, it's... I understand he even arrived in the country yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy for him because to win six Scudettos with Juventus, yeah. come to Inter Milan and still win with yeah. them, and uh, be in Italy throughout his career, mm -hmm. uh, most of us will envy to have that. Yeah. And for me, uh, I, I wish him all the best of luck yeah. from where he's starting now. This is the second phase of life. Yeah. Now he's retired, he's coming back home. Whatever business interest that he has, is, this is a time yeah. for him to Get open his it. eyes and then try yeah. to... Because most of us have had issues with people that were taking care of our businesses here and there. So this time... Mm -hmm. If he's retired properly, he should open his eye mm. and then hope that he gives his children, his wife, his family yeah. a good life going forward. Mm. Just finally, just one more thing before you go. You played for a lot of football clubs. Mm. Which, is the, which is your favorite? I think Ankara Guju. Turkey? Yes. Uh -huh. Because I went there and I met this coach who just loved me. <laughs> Who's this? His name is Esunya now. It's a Turkish uh -huh, man. Turkish man. Because... The year 2000, I had cancelled my contract with Venezia. Okay. Because Venezia had given me to Boavista on loan. And one year, I went mm -hmm. to Boavista. So when I came back, they had gone down. Mm. And in Italy, if a team goes down to Serie B, it's only one foreigner. Yeah. We are about three, four foreigners. Mm. So they chose one Brazilian defender to play for yeah. us. And then I was there not playing, so I said, let me cancel that. Because I cancelled and I came. Yeah. So I had not played for a while. But Ohini Kennedy, my friend, came and said, oh, yeah. Charlie, I heard you cancel your I said, yeah, okay, no problem. He didn't say anything. Then when he went back <coughs> to take hours, yeah, I received the call, I have to come. So I went there, yeah. and I told the coach straight away that I have not played this long. And then going on trials yeah. in January, yeah. winter time, and telling the coach that you've not played for a period, and the coach understands and says, okay, I'll give you time to recover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did he see? I don't know. My first training, we're doing playing this five against two. Yeah. And then I think he saw my touches and he got, fell in love with me. We played six friendly matches yeah. in Antalya. I didn't play one minute. Yeah. Then we came back to Ankara. The club, everybody was there. They said, yeah. we are playing against Samson's for. And that was the game that was going to determine whether I'll stay or I'll go. Mm -hmm. I was sitting on the bench, first half. Second half, he called me, my Kennedy. I didn't yeah. understand Turkish language then. <laughs> he told Kennedy, tell yeah. Augustine that all the club officials are here because of him. Okay. The man, the old man is holding his contract. Yeah. And that envelope is his money. Because Turkey, when they sign you, mm -hmm. they give you 30% of your money oh, okay. immediately. So that money is for him. But he has to go there and Improve play. Because it. me, I've told them what I've seen. Then I told Kennedy to tell him that, is it what I saw is what he wants me to do in the first half? Yeah. He says, yes. And then tell him that I can do better than that. <laughs> then he asked Kennedy, <clears throat> are you sure you explained to him well? Yeah. He says, yes. And the coach looked at me and just got up and left. So we came on yeah. as a sub. He asked me to play behind the striker. Two minutes, we had a free kick. I'm not that tall, but yeah. I'm very good with the head. Yeah. So they gave the crossing, pam, goal, 1-0. Then five minutes, he asked me to come back. Yeah. So he brought me back into the midfield. And I, I was just passing the ball left, right, center. And then there's another free kick. The same person brought the ball, another header, pump, 2-0. I played like 10 minutes. He said, I should come out. I said, ah. I saw they've raised the number, number 15. I'm mm -hmm. going out. So I was confused. Why? I haven't done it. So I went out. He said, Kenzie, told Kennedy, Kenzie, tell him to go and shower. And then go and see the old man. <laughs> that was your money waiting for you there. So I went and I signed the I signed a contract, yeah. they gave my money, and then the rest is history. The rest is history. I absolutely love it. Augustine okay, Naifu says that these days he's a centre back. <laughs> I, I, will, I will visit that Adrengano Park myself. I'm a, I'm a it's winger. Baleshi Park. Baleshi Park. I'll, I'll visit the Baleshi <laughs> Park. I'm a, I'm a skillful winger. I'll yeah. be testing my skills <laughs> against him out there on the pitch. 
hopefully you catch it and hopefully i can bring you visuals to show you on the track about augustine thank you for thank you. Uh, having time to speak to us we are grateful so hopefully another time we can bring you yes, back here yes, yes. um we, are, we totally appreciate your time that's our conversation for today same time on city tv on the tracker you know where to find us